Good evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the STEM Alliance Scientists, the Future Classroom Lab and Microsoft webinar, Empowering Education, Harnessing the Power of Microsoft Copilot. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance Scientists, Future Classroom Lab, Lab and Microsoft. My name is Luigi Prisco, and I work at European Schoolnet as a project support coordinator for the uh, Scientific STEM Alliance. Uh, and I have to, uh, the pleasure to be your host today. Together with us, um, we have my colleagues Rocio Benito and Camilla Zonta in the background, who will be supporting the webinar from a technical point of view. First thing first, let me share some technical details. You can engage with the speakers by posting your questions in the chat. We'll be sharing valuable information and helpful links with, your, uh, with you during the webinar, so keep an eye uh, in the chat. And very important, don't forget to sign the signature list. We are sharing the link uh, as well in the chat. By signing the signature list, you'll validate your participation to this webinar, making you eligible to receive a certificate of attendance uh, that we will share via email afterwards. In this session today, we will have the pleasure to have two experts from Microsoft who will introduce educators to the innovative capabilities of Microsoft Copilot, a cutting edge AI tool designed to assist with a wide range of tasks that can be used uh, as a teaching tool to enhance the learning experience. Moreover, we will tell you about the STEM Discovery Campaign 2024 and the Scientix Awards, a recognition program that celebrates outstanding projects and activities in STEM education. Specifically, we will introduce the Scientix Techie Awards supported by Microsoft. We will provide you with all the necessary information to participate in the SDC and be eligible for the Microsoft Scientix Techie Award. Finally, you will be able to ask questions throughout the webinar and we will address them in the Q&A session at the end. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to, wel uh, to welcome uh, Ovi Barcelo and Michelle Noon, our speakers for today. Ovi, after a 16-year uh, career as a primary teach uh, teacher and ICT coordinator of uh, Grupo Soroya in uh, Valencia, became a Microsoft innovative teacher. Currently, he works with colleagues and Microsoft partners uh, across 10 countries of Western Europe as modern class uh, classroom solution specialist ensuring that students and teachers using Microsoft technology have the best possible experience. Michelle has over 15 years of experience in working with IT partners and OEMs um, and currently works as an uh, education solution specialist for modern classroom supporting uh, the Western European teams and their partners to create the best possible hybrid teaching and learning solutions for educational institutions, for teachers and for students. Thank you so much for being here with us today, uh, presenting and discussing. Uh, I will leave you the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luigi. And, and thank you for, for having us here. It's a pleasure to be um, together with you again. <clears throat> so Michelle and I will, will uh, share with you how Microsoft is approaching this amazing uh, new world of um, um, artificial intelligence um, in diff different aspects. We will see during the call. So we will share the floor, Michelle and, and, and I. Please feel free to ask questions. We will <clears throat> answer after after the webinar. And I don't know, Michelle, if we have further ado, let's get started. Right. Let's get started. Thank you all for joining. So yes, the, the first thing to say is like, like why? why AI is here and, and, and why everybody's talking about AI. And, and there are many reasons, but we want to start with this graphic that is pretty visual. We say, well, while big technologies like uh, mobile phones, internet, or even Facebook took that many years to reach 100 million <clears throat> users, chat GPT and the first generative AI that we have um, for consumer, it only took three months. So that is the high impact. And now we can see the high impact that generative AI is having in, um, in, in, in the society. And we embrace it as Microsoft at different levels. And this slide could, could be used as an agenda, more or less of what we are going to share with you today. Not, not in a specific order, but it goes, uh, we will go through this, uh, this, these topics. We integrate AI in our learning accelerators. If you remember, if you were here in the last seminar we were with you, 
we will explain why the learning accelerators. Today, we will go a, bit, a little bit deeper uh, because uh, we have some exciting news to share. Then we have Copilot, which is our, what we call Bing Chat. So the chat that you can find uh, and you can interact with it. And we will, we will cover that. Then we have Copilot from Microsoft 365. Also, it's part of our, our, our agenda today. And it, it explains how it integrates with the apps you love. And finally, we offer the possibility to create your own Copilot <clears throat> with all the security and compliance that Microsoft offers to the customers, to the education customers, you can create your own Copilot. But maybe that's for another, another webinar. As, as we said, <clears throat> it's not only about how fast it grew, it is about all the opportunities we are getting with AI in education and how they align with the Microsoft uh, principles of enable equitable education for all the students and teachers in the world. Everything needs to be inclusively, des inclusively designed, needs to be simple, simple, and needs to be secure. And that is why it matches very well with our strategy. So our strategy of accelerated learning, of preparing students to the future, to improve our efficiency can be enhanced and can, and, and can be integrated with AI. Like how can we personalize more the learning? How can we equip students for the future ready skills? How we can protect our, uh, our data or unlock the productivity to other levels that we never imagined, imagined before. So all these opportunities, I think that we have it right now as educators, and I, I we would like to share how Microsoft is approaching these opportunities with different products or environments, and you, you name it. Let's get started. Let's go to Microsoft Copilot. Remember, yeah, whenever yeah. you hear, yeah, Michelle, whenever you hear about Microsoft Copilot, remember, uh, this is our chat. So Michelle, please. So Microsoft Copilot is available today for all of our education faculty users and higher ed education students, 18 plus. What has been announced only yesterday is that we're starting a private preview program for young learners in spring. So it is coming to that group, but we really want to make sure that we safeguard it. It's really safe railed for students that are younger than 18. You do not want your uh, 10 year olds to look a word up like love and 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 get something that is not appropriate for that age group so you want them to see friendship and heart so it needs to be safeguarded so that's why we're taking our time being cautious and making sure that it's all safe for the students so at this moment it's available education faculty users and 18 plus students now why Microsoft Copilot it is built on very powerful GPT-4 turbo for text um, and on, that low, on those large language models. So what it does, it basically creates a personal assistant for you where you can use natural language. And with natural language, I mean that you can use text or either type, or you can use speech. You can also record yourself and ask the question. And then in return, you'll get, so based on your prompt, you will get an answer back that it can be in text or it can be read out loud. So the coding behind it translated in natural language for us to understand. So no more complicated coding anymore. It's not just text or it is also now, a DALI is now also integrated, which means that you can generate images. So designer is now also integrated within Copilot. The beauty of it is that if you put something in, it will also quote the data sources it gets the information from. And that's important because that means that not only you as a teacher can check where your students got the information from, but your students can also check, okay, is this a reliable source, yes or no? It has no cutoff time. So what we mean by that is that if something has been posted on the internet today, theoretically, Copilot can find the information across that information. So it's very, very current. And lastly, and this is super important, if you log in with your work account, in, otherwise, in other words, known as your school account, it has commercial data protection which means that we as Microsoft have no eyes on your data. All that data stays within the environment of your school, which we call a tenant. So it stays there. Um, and every time that you put in a prompt, we have no eyes on it. We don't use it to feed the, uh, to, to train the model. It stays within the tenant. And once you click it away and start a new prompt, 
the information is gone. So it is very, very protected. And that's important, of course, with GDPR student privacy. Now, the way that you can access Copilot is uh, three different ways, actually. So, uh, of course, you have copilot.microsoft.com. There's also an edge sidebar that I'm going to show you a little later. And we have a mobile version of Copilot. And what is, I think, very, very exciting, because it hasn't changed in, uh, I think, about 40 years, right, Obi, is the, is the keyboard that you have on your Windows device. There is, a, uh, there is a button in the right bottom corner that now has, it's like a, it's like a script. That button will change into a Copilot button. First time in 40 years, but I think it sort of supports how much we are invested within this technology. Now, without further ado, let us show you exactly how it works. So, let's go to the next one. Yes, perfect. So, here you have Copilot. There are already a couple of uh, pre scripted prompts that you can use, like comparing something. Then, there are three different conversational styles. You have a balanced approach, very precise approach if you want to use it fact based, or a more creative approach. And then on the top, there is now a notebook variant. Then if you put in a prompt here, the difference between it is, is that you can put an enter in, so you can just keep typing. Now, as you can see in the right top corner, I logged in with my own, uh, with my own work account. And then it says protected. You will also see that just um, ahead of the new topic. When it says that, you'll know that you'll have commercial data protection. Very important. Now, I've asked it, explain the key similarities and differences between proteins and carbs, and please put examples of each in a table. And then what you will see is that it gives me information. So we have to wait. Sometimes it's a little talkative, so you have to let it respond. Then you go to the top and you'll see that well, both are essential macronutrients. But when I hoover over the information, I also see exactly where it got the data from. And it also states it below. Here is that table that I asked it to do. And I can check that, but I don't have to copy it anymore. I can just export it via the Excel tab and plop. Excel online, there you go. And you can use it. And that works for anything that you can put in a table. So hop, keep it, copy it, and then you're done. Super easy, super quick. Okay, let's try something new. Go to the other version. I'll stay on creative. And what I'm going to ask for if Copilot can create a lesson plan about the Battle of Waterloo, adapt it to my fifth grade history lesson, and ask it if it can please add some learning objectives. So, then it goes, of course, I can help you. The learning objectives would be to identify, to compare, and to analyze. These are the materials for you to prepare for your class. So, it also says, for example, prepare a source document, prepare a rubric. Very important, of course, to assess your students objectively. And then it gives me the procedure. Please take a look. Let us know what you think in the comments. Now, it's important to say this answer will never be the same twice. It is always different because it's generative AI and it's a creative answer that you will get. I'm interested though, so I can use this as a starter, but I'm interested to know more about that rubric. So maybe it can create me an example of a rubric to assess this assignment objectively. Take a look. What you will see here now is that it's going to make a table with criteria and the different objective criteria. So it says, okay, I am going to measure delivery, content and organization based on four levels, excellent, good, fair, and poor. And there you see what, you, what a student would need to demonstrate in order to get graded based on either fair up to excellent. Now, of course, when you do this, you can include other criteria. You don't have to let it think of everything. You can also say, please add criteria as isn't this source data, for example. Now, I like this, and I can export it from Excel, but I would like to deliver it with a little bit more hmm, uh, jus. So I would like to get, create a picture. So I'm asking it for a surrealistic image of Napoleon in the art style of René Magritte. Why René Magritte? Um, just because I think it's funny, you know, it's the, um, you know, the, the picture, the painting of the guy with the bowler hat with the apple, that's that style. 
So then it creates four completely original, never, you can't find these on the internet, anywhere, images of Napoleon in the style of René Magritte. You can copy it and then use it. Okay, new topic. What else can it do? It has the sidebar, like I said. You have the chat function, which is the same, but it also has a compose function. And you can use that, for example, to write a basic email that you can, of course, adapt. I'm going to ask it to write an email about my new, my new themed week about healthy food. Informational email, please short, short in length. And then it creates that for me. Now know that you have to see this as a basis. This is not an end product. It gives you a template that you can adapt, that you can, that you can um, make into your own version in your own tone of voice. But I think it saves us a lot of time already to use that as a, as a starting point. You can copy it. There's a button, for example, copy it direct in your Outlook. You can also use that sidebar to, for example, go to a website, in this case, the WWF. It's a lot of information on this website. So I'm going to ask Copilot, go to the precise modus and ask it to make a summary for me of this page. What is in this page? You know how you have these very large pieces of text and you're thinking, okay, I'm looking for something specific. Is this text gonna be about that? And instead of going through the entire text, you can ask it, what is this text about in three pointers? And it will give me information. Now, this is quite technical, I thought. So, and I want to deliver it to my fifth grade. So maybe I can make it a little easier to understand for eight-year-olds. And then you'll get the exact same information, but in a completely different tone of voice. It is stuck. Is that... Let's see. Do you see? Can't hear you go. Yeah, there we go again. Good. And then it goes in a completely. So buying stuff can hurt forests. It can. And there are people that are trying to protect them. So I think, you know, you can really use this as a starting point. It doesn't only take a look at web pages. It also can do, uh, for example, summaries or can extract information from PDFs. And we all know how difficult it is to copy information from PDFs. You always get this in a different, you know, in a different font, in a different letter type or size. Not anymore. Those days are in the past. So what you can do here is say, what are the three most important understandings from this PDF, which is about the PISA 2022 results, but then particularly for Spain. And instead of all of going through all of those 80 plus countries that are included in there, it gives you the summary of the most important understandings for Spain. So this is just a short overview of what Copilot, which is integrated across the web. So I'm talking, it, it derives its information from the web. Now that's very important to understand. You cannot upload your own documentation or extract information from your own data. This covers information from the web. Now, over to Ovi, because he's going to show you something that does. Oh, yeah, sorry. If you want to know more about Copilot, please take a look at this link, aka.ms slash Copilot for educators. And it really helps you to learn more about it. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, indeed. Copilot, as Michelle said very well, um, Congratulations for the demo. Um, reads from the internet, so so all the information that is in the internet um, uh, is accessible. That's perfect. But let's let's try to take one step ahead and see what Copilot can do for you if you wanted to integrate it with your data. And that is what we call Copilot for M three sixty five. So Michelle said very well that well this is the availability. Also good news. Press from the press. Uh, yesterday we presented that today every user that having a license with Microsoft, every faculty user, can start uh, purchasing this ability of uh, or this plugin called Copilot for Microsoft 365. That we will explain what exactly is. It's your AI assistant to work in the classroom, and and you can start with no seed minimum. You can start with one, five, ten. You can start trying and then grow. 
uh, together with your needs. But also we announced that this starting April the 1st, also for higher education students, will be available this as an add-on. So if you are uh, experiencing the, the beauties of uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365 and you want to extend it uh, to your um, uh, uh, higher education students, uh, you will be able to do it uh, starting April the 1st. So what is exactly this AI assistant to work in the, in the classroom? So remember, we said that <clears throat> Copilot uh, is reading, is using the, 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 the large language models, and maybe I can use my pointer here, um, the large language models and the web, right? So what if we want uh, to use also our data? So that is exactly what Microsoft 365 Copilot uses. So you are in the tenant, as Michelle explained, in the environment of Microsoft, protected environment, the most secure environment for education. And then you have a lot of data there. You have your exchange, your, your, your inbox, your outlook, your teams, your documents. So what if we can extract information also from that data and the web with the large language models, EPT4, that we, we, see, we have seen before. But also not only extract information, but also interact with your Microsoft apps, the apps that we all know, PowerPoint, Word, Teams. What if we can interact with them and do something from the web with your data and in the Microsoft 365 apps. That is exactly what, uh, uh, what uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot is doing. So in a graphic way, all our data technically, and, and sorry if we get a little bit technical here, is storing what we call the graph. And the graph is uh, where everything is connected. It's like a metaverse where all our products are connected. So reading for our graph, we're going to use this, what we call the semantic search to whenever you prompt something, we'll go to that data, it will understand not only the text, but also the context of your data, and we'll embed that content in the products that we are using every day. So let's see how it differs. If you, if you have used uh, Microsoft 365 and, and you have used what we call the, the school search, uh, it's like you, 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 you search for words, uh, uh, and then you find something like, for example, here, like without data. So we have, uh, we, 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 we find the closest uh, uh, match content, rank in order. And the keywords need to match with the results and the suggested that it, that it gives you. You have it sorted by the last modification and, and gives you a little summary of the content. Okay, how can we enhance that with what we call the semantic index? So what Copilot is using to understand your data. As I said, it's not only lo looking or searching from the text, but also from the context. So the autocorrect, the spelling, and every jargon that, that we can use, it gives you informative answers directly from the content. It's, it's also understanding the context, and it's not sorting it out by date, but also by relevance, which is super important. How relevant is this content according to my wording? This is like, I want to do something like this, okay? So also enhance with uh, another insights and also AI generated questions and answers to the topic you are given. So imagine how powerful is that with your own data and the data of your organization. But it's very important to say something. Whenever we talk about our data, uh, always we get like the chill saying, okay, what is this about the data? So, so Microsoft Copilot is built on top of our security approach. So Microsoft Copilot for uh, M365 will not uh, open any door that is not uh, that is closed, or we give it more visibility than my permissions allows me to have. So Microsoft Copilot is helping with the current permissions I have, helping me to go more productive, to get more answers from the context and not opening any door that is closed for me. So with all the security, the compliance and the privacy that Microsoft per definition offers to our customers, Microsoft Copilot 
uses the responsible AI principles that Microsoft has to provide a more productive environment and well, and everything that AI can provide, but with your data and in your apps. So as always, uh, a demo is the, the best uh, way to show it. So let me show you how it works in one of the, our products. We don't want to spend a lot of time because it works in PowerPoint, Excel, Word, Teams, uh, Whiteboard, uh, Loop, so and, and a lot of products. But let's see how it works in PowerPoint. And if I can uh, move the last here point, okay. So you see here that we have a, power, a PowerPoint presentation, like everybody knows, but we have Copilot on the right. It's say like create a presentation based on my document. You see how easy? I just name my document and then boom, the magic happens. So reading from my document creates a presentation, but also I can interact with that presentation. Okay, can you add something this? Because I don't like the first approach. Can you add the benefits of sustainable material? And then boom, you have it there. Wow, this is nice. Well, this is like it's a little bit wordy. Can I make it more missile? Here you have it. Understanding not only the text, remember, but also the context. I want to add animations. There we go. And also, you see there that it gives you presenter notes. So again, understanding the context of your uh, uh, initial document is like not only having the brain of the generative AI, but also the hands of a generative AI. So I take the brain, I understand your context, I understand your document, and you tell me what to do, and I will do it for you. So the productivity is like, boom, busted like incredibly uh, uh, with these things. So now this is probably one of the most important things we're going to explain to you in a very simple way, the differences between Copilot. OK, so Copilot, first column, what is Copilot? So everybody can use Copilot for personal use. It's public, it's free. You can go to big.com. You can go to copilot.microsoft.com using your personal account. And you will use the top large language models. And it will be a web, an AI powered web search with answers and content generation. OK. What if I want to use the same thing, but with commercial data protection? Because I want to use it with my questions for my classroom. And I want to ask to adapt your answers to my uh, uh, classroom or my reality uh, using my prompts. So that is Copilot with commercial data protection. This is exactly what Michelle showed you at the beginning. And that is included in every eligible license uh, uh, in education. So you have a license, you're a teacher, or you will have uh, 18 plus, you can have this enabled with your school account. Third column, Copilot from Microsoft 365. <clears throat> what if we want to integrate that with my data, Microsoft Graph, integrated in our apps, and with all the privacy compliance and security that my own uh, environment has? Then is when, when, when I need Copilot from Microsoft 365. This is the example of PowerPoint we, we just saw. Okay, and that is it. That's, that is the, the the price that you see in the screen that needs to be added on top of your subscription. So again, three Copilots, the free public, the chat on the internet with all the protection, and the one integrated with your data and your apps. So. This is about Copilot. Now we're going to see what are the news press from the press coming from to our learning accelerators. Michelle? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk to you about the learning accelerators and then specifically the reading coach updates that we have. And let's talk, start with the learning accelerators. The whole reason that we that we have created these learning accelerators are among others, for example, for the PISA results. I mean, most of you will probably have seen them. And for the ones that do not know them, the OECD um, measured the quality of mathematics, reading, and science among 15-year-olds. And what you see is that the difference between the 2018 and the 2000, 
2022 scores are significantly different and unfortunately significantly lower than before. So especially science is, mm, is comparable to four years ago, 2018, but you'll see the others you know, have dropped and we'll need to support that better. And because of that, we are introducing the learning accelerators. Uh, Ovi, could you go to the next slide? Yeah, thank you. So the learning accelerator. So there, the learning accelerators that we have put in place are based on supporting foundational skills and future ready skills. Foundational skills like reading, like numeracy, well-being, super important and foundational, of course. And on the other hand, future ready skills like making our students ready to talk in public, to talk among their friends, but also, you know, feel comfortable doing that. Um, to also increasing information literacy. I mean, our, our students learn different than the way I used to learn, you know, which was basically based on books. Now they seek their information on the internet. So we have to teach them better ways to determine whether or not information is reliable or not. So that's all about uh, information literacies. And for that, we've created progress and coaches. Progress is, is really, so the coach part is really on supporting the student. And for example, in reading coach, which I'm going to show you, it's really about um, uh, supporting them in, okay, you can take your time or this is, so it's, a, it's about the pronunciation of words, whether or not they've, uh, they've missed words, but it's also about the expression part. Uh, so without further ado, and then the progress the part is about for a teacher to create insights in especially exactly what the student will need to develop, what they're good at, what they need to develop more, what difficult words there, if there's progress over time and, and why that is. So um, then I'm going to briefly show you, go really quickly through it. What is available today already is that background noise suppression. So that means that if you are having a full classroom and all of your students are using reading coach at the same time with their headphone on, then the background noise is now suppressed even more to make that to make that progress part more accurate. Then if we go through, I have a couple of quick private previews. I'm going to show them to you. So I'm going to click through it quickly. The one is we can now generate passages with AI. Second is we can create, based on the generative AI, uh, uh, comprehension questions, which is the next slide. And then the last part, yeah. And then the last one uh, is that you are now able to, with Reflect, so that's the next slide, with, you're able with Reflect now to already ask specific questions to your students. For example, about homework. If you're, if you notice that your student has been, um, has been, you know, not feeling well about certain assignments of their homework, as a teacher, you can now put in, or not now, you will be able soon to put in questions specifically about that homework. So, without further ado, let's get into a demo again. Uh, what you see here is the environment of Kara Coleman. Kara Coleman has their classes here. You will recognize this if you're using Teams already. So you'll see the tiles, all of the different classes that she has. You can move them around, right? All right, let's go to fourth grade. Fourth grade, you see classwork, assignments. We're going to click on assignments because I want to show you the new features that we have in Reading Coach. So creating a new assignment here. And I am going to put in an assignment to read about space for my fourth graders. I've prepared a piece of text, so I'm going to copy that in right here. Dear class, we're going to read an exciting piece with Reading Coach about space. And the reason you have to put something in, oh, yeah, sorry, have to adapt it. It's standard, it's on eighth grade, so I have to adapt it to fourth grade. Huh? And then based on that fourth grade, the generative AI, this you already have, you can, for example, clarify the concept based on the text that you've put in. So clicking on clarifying concepts and boom, look. So it gives a different format. You'll see a bigger title. Reading instructions is more clear. Take your time. Enjoy the story. It also says, because I already put that in my piece, I'm going to ask questions, comprehension. So now it says, what's the story about? So you want to keep it or you want another version? Oh, I want to keep it. I think it's fine. Now, I like sparkle, so I'm going to add some sparkle here. 
ah, okay, this is a lot of sparkle, maybe a little bit too much sparkle for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to adapt it. Remember, people, it gives you a template, so you will need to now and then change it a little bit and, you know, lessen it or make it just adopt it a little bit. So I'm going to remove some of them because they can't be the text. They cannot be a distraction to the text, right? So let's remove a little bit here and there. All right. So there we go. This looks good. I'm going to keep it like this. So I'm going to add now a learning accelerator and we're going to do the reading progress one. Now, I can include a Word document or PDF or browse from the sample library. That's already possible. You all know that already. But now what will come very soon, probably by end of this month, is generating your own passage. Of course, I knew that there was a space topic in there. So space, fourth grade, so that nine or 10 year olds, I can choose the length of the text. Now for this exercise, I'm going to do 100. Now it's only in English in the future, like all of the other things in Teams, it will come in different languages, and that will also be very soon. Click on generative, uh, uh, generate a new AI, and this piece of text is now completely original. I can take a look. Do I like it? Does this suit my lesson plan? I can increase the complexity or decrease it if I think it's too difficult. And then in this case, I'm going to use the passage and then give that to my students. Now, Put in your reading level. That depends on the country, what you're what what you're applying. Put in the genre if you want to. How many times can a student try this and record themselves? Is there a time limit? And I said, take your time. So no time limit for me. And then I can adopt the sensitivity if I want to. So put it on very sensitive, the AI, or say, no, default is good. Now, this is new. Ad comprehension is not new. But what is new is the following part. I'm going to click on it. And now the comprehension questions, I don't need to add my own. The AI can generate questions for me based on the text. I can add as many questions as I want to. I'm going to add five. It will give you an overview. It's always different questions. So sometimes they're a little too easy. Sometimes I think, uh, you know, I want more multiple choice or less or more open questions. I can go through them. Up. Space isn't it? The people have never explored space before. Mm. Okay, and one open question. So what I will do, I'm going to delete that one because I don't think that that's very relevant. They could have answered that without the text. I'm going to keep these four. Click on next, and now I am ready. I'm going to take a look at. Okay, so when will the students have to hand the assignment in? So you can place the time here. Am I going to assign it to all my students or just to a couple? And then what is super cool now is that you can add a reflect check-in related to this particular assignment. So I'm going to add it and this is the way it would look. I'm just going to show you quickly so that you can take a look. Yeah. What that would look like. So I'm Thanks okay, but what is okay? Easily heard. Bored, not interested or engaged. Annoyed, irritated by something. It's really beautiful how it adapts by a sudden disturbance. The tone of voice. Interested in learning or discovering something. I think we should all have learning uh, reflect honestly, but it's very important for our students to be able to express their feelings better. Now, this is so I have now given the assignment. This is an example because no one has returned it, obviously. So this is an example of a returned assignment. You click here on returned. These are the students in my class. And then we'll take Ashley. This is another assignment. Eh? And let me just show you what that would look like. Here's the no background noise suppression that we talked about earlier. Now not in preview anymore. The study of Earth's landforms is bicycle geography. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. They can also be glaciers or rivers. Landforms are sometimes called 
fight physical physical features it is important for students to know about the physical ge geography of earth the seasons that ask for fair atmosphere so what you can see now is that the ai have said exactly okay here she made a mispronunciation so here you have the total correct words per minute the accuracy mispronunciations are purple you remember that she said physical geography and then it says glaciers is also mispronounced i thought she said glaciers actually quite well so you can correct it and then immediately boop, the score will also go up you see and then you'll have in red for example the the self corrections because she said phi physical so it corrects itself so this is really already how you can see that exactly what kind of words she said well or she can learn from and then there's the expression part as well um, where you can see what, how she read it, if she read it quickly or not. So this is uh, what I wanted to show you, some new features that we'll have very soon available in Reading Coach. So um, yeah, back to you, Ovi. Oh, um, no, sorry, I still have more news to come. Um, still my turn, I'm sorry. Um, what we now also have is not only, so Reading Coach and Reading Progress in Teams, we have a Reading Coach app, which is available now. If you go to coach.microsoft.com, this app is available. You can log in with your, uh, oh, two seconds. You can log in with your own personal account. Um, uh, so the, your Hotmail or your Outlook account. And this is what it looks like. So let me show you here, coach.microsoft.com. So you can add, again, add your own passage, of course, or re read a passage from the library, same as what you would have in the classroom. Now the child at home can read their own story. So different levels, of course. So you, you can recognize it by the title, but also by the number of words in the text. I mean, a date with Rachmaninoff. Now, well, that's not for six-year-olds. But the cool thing about this is, is that you can, as a child, create your own story at home. So you can choose a main character, for example, an animal or a fantasy character. You can, or a science fiction character. In this case, let's choose an alien. So choose an alien. Where do you want the alien to be? Where does the, the story have to be? Well, let's choose an alien on an island. And then these are standard texts so that the child can, can determine what his level is. You will also see that not only the words and the text will be more complicated, but the amount of text is also bigger as you uh, progress throughout the levels. So in this case, let's choose a level one and then create an entirely new piece of text. So the Gen AI will now create a whole new story. So before I start reading, let's take this away because here also you'll have generative, the immersive reader, so you can uh, uh, enlarge the text or decrease it, increase the spacing, yes or no, adapt the font. Now we all know that children love comic sans, so we'll leave it at that. You can add colors. So children with dys uh, dyslexia, for example, change the background, in this case into green. And then what you see here is that you can add syllables or remove them. For children that may, English is not their native language and also just for kids that are practicing, you can highlight the nouns or the verbs in color so that they can practice. I know we notice a lot that children with ADHD like to have line focus, so you can adapt that. And of course there's picture dictionary. So how does that work picture dictionary? If you hover over a word and then click on it, for example, if you hover over an island, it gives you images of the island or of a treasure, but they are safeguarded, right? So these pictures are meant for children in K-12. So now we start reading. Z is an alien. He likes to explore. Z found a shiny map on an island. It's for a treasure hunt. Z is very happy to start. So I've got this, I stop, and then what the, the child will get in this case, will get a second version of the storyline. 
So it's going to create its own story. Where do you want the story to go? Where do you want C to go? Does the hunt begin? The hunt for the treasure? Or is it a detour to danger? Get a little bit more exciting. You choose one and then it will create a new story. After having done that two times, so three stories in total, you'll get this overview that you see here. You can practice the difficult words that you didn't pronounce correctly. Practice makes progress. Select any word to keep growing your skills. When you're ready, press the microphone and read the word out loud. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're making your brain stronger. Nice work. Very good. Okay, so I'm done here. What you can also see is that you can read something else. You have a history. So your own library. So here you can keep reading one of the stories that I've already created here. And notice that it generates an, uh, an image as well, right? Or you can read one of those stories that you've done all, all over again. And it gives you a limited amount of information on your achievements because that's not the important fact here. The important, the meaning behind this, this is for home learning, home reading. It's to create more engagement with reading, to create that based on what the child is interested in. So to create their own stories and the way, if they've done several of them, then the way it, they are, uh, um, how do you say that? Credited, no, um, rewarded, is that they will receive new characters or new locations. So that is the Reading Coach app for home usage. Yeah, you have it available at coach.microsoft.com and here is a, uh, in the next page, sorry. And here you have a QR code. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that was it. So <clears throat> we're getting to the end. Um, thank you, Michelle. The demos are incredible. So you can start using today Copilot and uh, .microsoft.com and chat with it. If you have a Microsoft account, you, you, you know that everything will be protected. You can start using Reading Coach at home with your kids. Um, it, is, it is incredible creating their own stories and, and having their own pace for learning. For me, it's, it's uh, incredible. So you have it already available in that URL um, there, coach.microsoft.com. And I want to just wrap up because we have like um, two minutes left. I want to wrap up with a, a, a bit of a concept of AI. And I, I need to say that AI has been here like forever, right? So in 1950s, um, we had uh, artificial intelligence already. I, I guess it was Deep Blue, that uh, artificial intelligence that played chess. And that was artificial intelligence as well. And we have been using that and we have been using machine learning that is a subset of artificial intelligence that learn from existing data. And we go even deeper with deep learning. And, and it was another technical, uh, another technique where the artificial intelligence was trained with data, but also managed to create uh, neural connections like our brain. But now we have something different, which is generative AI. And I think to, to wrap up, we, we created a super short demo is like, 20 seconds demo that I think express very well what generative AI is bringing to the world. So, okay, I'm going to pause, sorry. And what we did here is go to Copilot and without any other question, paste this image. It's an image that we found on the internet about the CPR algorithm and it has some boxes and, and words and we just paste it there. And we ask, um, according to the image, if the patient is in a, a systole, when should I restart the process? So we didn't train the model. We didn't train it with a lot of data. We didn't say that it's even a process. We didn't say when, where this starts or where that ends, nothing. And let's see what Copilot says. According to the image, if the patient is in a system, you should restart the process immediately for one cycle. 
to say, how is it even possible? I mean, it's the first time that artificial intelligence has this image. Uh, the question is one question, I think, here inside of the, of the chart, why it understands the process, why the arrows are underst uh, understood by this thing. So that is why generative AI is so powerful. Because again, it doesn't understand only the text of the images, but also the context. And it's able to create brand new information from the context. From the web, Copilot. From your own data, Copilot from MGC5. With your students in your classroom, everything that Learning Accelerator is providing in Teams. And also now for you at home with uh, Reading Coach app. So this is, uh, this is it for us. I hope that you managed to uh, uh, be with, um, uh, learn with us. What are the different options that we are we are offering? We want to we want to make sure that you have time to get back to us with some questions, and we really hope that you find it interesting. And now, thank you, for, thank you for being there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ovi and Michelle. This was very interesting, and um, it was very interesting to learn about co-pilot and the learning accelerator. And I truly believe that our participants uh, today, they have gained um, some knowledge that they will for sure bring, uh, that, that for sure will help them uh, in the classroom. Uh, now, as anticipated before, I wanted to share some information about the STEM discovery campaign and the award supported by Microsoft, the Scientific Techie Award. Um, as uh, I hope many of you already know the STEM discovery campaign, the Scientix STEM discovery campaign is a joint international initiative co-organized this year with uh, the Life Terra project. The initiative invites educator, project, organization, and any other educational stakeholder to, um, uh, to, part to in Europe and beyond to celebrate careers and study in the field of uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics as to say STEM, and the campaign runs from February uh, to the 30th of April, 2024. If you have organized, uh, contributed to, or attended uh, any activity that promotes STEM education at any time since May, 2023 of last year, you can pin it in the STEM discovery campaign map and become eligible for the Scientix Awards. Uh, but we will get there in a second. Any activity, um, so an action or an activity can uh, have many forms. It can be attending an event like this uh, webinar. Uh, it can be implementing a learning scenario, attending or organizing a workshop, um, a festival or a webinar. Um, it could be inviting a speaker to your class to talk about STEM. Uh, it could be organizing a project uh, like any activity or discussing um, any discussion with, with your students or uh, participants about STEM. Um, how to participate in the STEM discovery campaign? So first of all, you will need to get your credential uh, if you haven't already. So you register to the Scientix portal and you obtain the UN ID credentials. Uh, which later you will use every time you log in in the in the in the portal. Then you pin the activity on the map by filling the submission form, either um, on the Scientix portal or on the STEM Discovery app, uh, which I'll show you later uh, how to download. Um, on the Scientix portal, uh, you first. Uh, log in with your UNID credential, then you select my activities, um, or, um, and then you submit the activities. You can include uh, an image, uh, a description of the activities, and, and so on. And then, um, as I said, you will be eligible for the Scientix Awards. Um, uh, Meaning, we during the STEM Discovery Campaign 2024, we are also hosting the Scientix Awards, which is our recognition programs for outstanding um, activities and uh, project in science education. Um, and you will be um, eligible for some awards. Um, as I mentioned, we also have a mobile app um, that you can use instead of, you know, the um, Scientix portal on your uh, 
uh, browser on your laptop. So um, that will make it uh, easy to easier to um, participate in the SDC and to pin um, on the map. You can download the app on your phone by using the link uh, that my colleague shared in the in the chat. So uh, as I mentioned, this year Microsoft is supporting an award, specifically the Scientix Techie Awards. And how can you be eligible for the um, Scientix Techie Award? So the Scientix Techie Award will consider any contribution, any activities that you submit to us uh, that will uh, um, that will consist in carry out, carry out an, an activities uh, an activity in the classroom with your students, integrating different technologies like, for example, Microsoft Copilot or the Learning Accelerator and any other resources and products available. So what you have to do is um, create an activity and carry out in the classroom, implement it in the classroom using, um, for example, these technologies that um, Ovi and Michelle have throughoutly explained during this webinar. And you'll be eligible for, um, for the award. The award is um, the opportunity to come to Brussels in our office at European Schoolnet in the Future Classroom Lab to attend a workshop in June. Also, uh, you can uh, we invite you to share this opportunity to all of your colleagues that, for any reason, uh, are not attending this webinar. So share the word, share also spread the word on um, on your social media using uh, the hashtag um, there, uh, SDC and uh, Microsoft. Um, Timeline. This is the timeline. Um, so as I said, on uh, the STEM discovery campaign started in February, so it's already running for a month. Um, but it will end on April 30th. So you have um, a lot of time, I would say, to, to create an activity, to carry out an activity in the classroom and participate in the SDC um, and, and maybe be the lucky winner. Um, so uh, mind the date, 30th of April is the deadline to submit your activity. In May, the winners will be announced. And um, in June, um, there will be the workshop. Um, that, so the, the winners will, uh, will be invited, uh, all expenses, of course, uh, included and uh, covered. Um, and you can come to 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 our office. Uh, so I guess we we are we came to an end. Uh, thank you all for participating. Um, I also invite you to sub to, to subscribe subscribe to our newsletter to be updated on our uh, future activities and again sign the signature list. We actually have um, a couple of minutes that I would like to used to ask because we received some questions throughout the throughout the webinar and um, specifically there is a question I would like to ask to our speakers because I think it's very important um, and I guess it's maybe a, a concern that several teachers have and it is uh, it is uh, this one um, and it it, um, it implies the use of uh, artificial intelligence in the classroom. So one um, teachers ask, uh, well, more than a question is actually a, a, a statement. So results is going to be worse uh, according to this, uh, to this uh, participant uh, because students will use AI in the classroom and will stop thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess this is not, uh, this concern, um, Nikos uh, is not the only one concerned about this. So I would very much like to hear from you, your insight, your thought about the, about this um, statement. Yeah. Ovi, would you like to take this or shall I? What do you yeah, 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 of course. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't, I can say worst or better is something that we can apply here because this is very subjective to an individual. What is worse and what is better? I think that for the worst or for the better, and we'll, that will depend on individuals, generative AI is coming here to stay. <clears throat> so what we need to do is um, we as a company, we need to, to apply the top principles for security, transparency, accessibility 
to, do, to those tools to be used responsible. And the skills that are required in the world for using generative AI need to be received, taught somewhere. And it is, it's the responsibility of we as a company, we as parents, we as a society, and of course, we as a schools to make the best use of this generative AI. Because it's not something, again, for the better or for the worse that will um, pass and in some fashion, it is something that will remain and will grow. So it's our responsibility to educate the children, adults of tomorrow, to make the best use of it. Yeah, and I would like to add something to that. I think, um, so can it be used for poor things? Yes, of course. So like Ovi said, you will need to support that. Um, what I also think is that it is possible now, this generative AI gives us the possibility for to teach our children to think strategically beyond measure. I mean, let's be honest, the way I don't know who, how, how old Nikos, I don't know, and I'm not going to ask how old you are, but let's just talk about me. I have no problem telling. I turned 45 this year. And, and the way that I was taught was in books. And I was very good at learning what was in the books. But I didn't learn how to think strategically, umbrella vision, until, until I was, I think, 32, 35 and had to learn the hard way. I think it's amazing that our children now have technology to already start thinking about what do I want to create? Because the value of the output is based on the value of the input, is based on the prompt. So in order to create that framework already, you need to think about where do I want to go? What do I want to? Because you can you can have an answer to anything. So so specifically, how can I how can I think of what is the objective of my question? What's the audience of my question? What is in, within what boundary do I want my question to be answered? It's amazing that you can already teach young children to think strategically. And then when that information comes back, we can learn them and, okay, you got this information back. How valuable, how reliable is this information? There are source data there so they can check. So then we can teach them the difference between reliable data and unreliable data. Question the students on that data. I mean. That's an amazing teaching opportunity. And then lastly, I love the creativity. I love the fact that you can uh, you can take persons, you know, like people that I used to read about. I had Latin and Greek in school. And then you learned about these people that lived a thousands and thousands of years ago. And you were you were it, it didn't really become real. And now the AI can help you based on so much content to make that person become real next to a person that you might have now in current politics, for example, put that next to a, a, a Roman senator of that time and compare. And that really, you know, it gets your brain started in a very different manner than we've ever done before. Um, so long story short, I think it offers so many opportunities for us as well. And of course it needs to be, we need to safeguard it and we need to uh, make sure that it's appropriate, but it offers a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry. I hope it answers it a Thank little bit. Because... Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Ovi. Unfortunately, um, we uh, have passed um, six. Um, so our time is, um, is finished. Um, thank you very much again to our speakers, Ovi and Michelle. Uh, again, this was a very informative and interesting session. Um, thank you for your contribution and for being with us here today. Um, thank you to all the participants for joining this session. And I hope you have uh, learned something today that will help you in the future. Thank you all and uh, have a nice uh, evening. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.